Here we're going to share a few tips on trans-epithelial photorefractive keratectomy, more commonly known as trans-PRK or smart surface. This is one of the very nice capabilities of the Schwind Amaris 1050RS Excima laser system that we've got at Moorfields. Based on rapid ablation, excellent tracking, and the fact that the epithelium ablates at approximately the same rate as the stroma. It's a simple procedure to perform, but there are a few tips that will help you to get good results consistently. Firstly, operate with low light levels in any form of laser vision correction. This helps the patient to maintain fixation comfortably. Secondly, make sure you've got a good head position with the cheek and the brow level to make sure that the eye is right in the middle of the palpebral fissure all the way through the surgery. Before you start, you always want to rehearse a few coaching points that are going to help the patient during the procedure. Relaxing with both eyes open, blinking whenever they like but not squeezing, keeping the head reasonably still and making sure they always look at the green fixation light. And it's worth telling them this may get a bit fuzzy as the procedure progresses and as they start to smell the ablation product. Your main aim then is to preserve a uniform tear interface at the start of ablation. So we're holding the lids apart with no speculum to do the registration locking there. And then we're going to bring down the environmental control system, allowing the patient to blink freely. And then just slipping the speculum in, encouraging them to keep both eyes open, in particular the contralateral eye. That's the trick there to stop them squeezing. Locking on the tracking and then we're ready to go with the ablation or with the uniform tear interface. You can see the expanding centrifugal spot pattern in the refractive phase of the trans-PRK here that then contracts back into the middle before we start the PTK element. That centrifugal pattern helps to drive fluid to the periphery and minimize the effect of any unevenness in the tear film. But if you can base your technique on obtaining a clean, uniform tear interface before you start ablation every time, then that will really help you to get consistent results. And there we are at the end of ablation with the super smooth bed produced by the fullerene spot pattern. Then we're straight on to the application of chilled BSS and the tip here is to drop it on gently rather than squirting it onto the eye. That's more comfortable with the patient. And a final tip, once you've applied the mitomycin, done the irrigation and put on your drops at the end of surgery, is to put your bandage contact lens on upside down. This is a tip from Palacaris, the father of LASIK, and it avoids getting air bubbles underneath the contact lens. So there it is, a few little tips on trans-PRK that really revolve around keeping the patient relaxed during surgery and keeping the tear film uniform prior to ablation. If the tear film does start to break up after you've locked on the tracking, then it's just a quick freshen up with a super wet sponge with your chosen liquid masking agent. I'm using BSS here. Wait 20 seconds for the tear film to be uniform and then apply the ablation. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching and do please take a look at the related videos on the treatment of irregular astigmatism and trans-PRK combined with cross-linking.